honor and, uh, and a privilege uh, to be with you uh, today. And uh, after this, I'll be meeting with the uh, Israeli ambassador to the U.S., uh, Dr. Michael Oren. So you're invited to, uh, to the office. If uh, I know you'll be busy here, but if you have a chance. And we have the best Cuban coffee in town. So, uh, so come on over and, uh, and say hello. Uh, this town can't compete with, uh, with, my, with our town. But uh, thank you, Jacob. Uh, we have indeed known each other for, uh, for many years, and he's been a, a, a wonderful friend. And, uh, and I am so uh, pleased as punch to be here with new friends. Uh, as Jacob uh, pointed out, I've been representing the 18th Congressional District of, uh, of Florida for uh, a few years now. I took Claude Pepper's spot when, uh, when Claude uh, passed away. And uh, what an extraordinary uh, friendship I've enjoyed with, uh, with the Federation. Uh, because Jacob talked about Super Sundays and delivering kosher meals and uh, uh, just a myriad of activities that we've, uh, that we've held together. And uh, the, uh, the birthright trips that the Federation puts on that, that enables uh, Jewish uh, young men and women uh, to visit Israel for the, for the first time, rediscover their heritage, their roots, and and recommit themselves to their faith and to their people. So, um, in many ways, the Federation is uh, fulfilling the Jewish uh, principle of perfecting the world. So, I am blessed to uh, be a part of uh, our wonderful Federation, and uh, and I thank each and every one of you for what you're doing in your areas, uh, because you fully understand that Israel's struggle is America's struggle. They are linked. It's a struggle between tyranny and liberty, between democracy and violent Islamic extremism, <coughs> between those who love life and those who preach death. Israel is the stabilizing force in an unstable region, and it's a region of critical importance to us here in the United States, and that's why I was proud to author a letter that was signed by uh, almost 180 members of Congress asking the President to fully implement our existing agreement to uh, provide robust funding for security assistance to uh, Israel. Uh, I'm very worried that with uh, uh, the deficit and the debt and people are now uh, starting to look at where they can cut the budget, one place where they cannot be thinking about cutting the budget is the security assistance to Israel that is so needed. It's needed right up to today. Just last week, another rocket from Gaza landed in Israel. Two months ago, one killed yet another civilian. Israel is presently engaged in a defense drill uh, maneuver to ensure that it is prepared against threats from Iran, from Syria, from all of their violent proxies. Uh, last week, as, uh, as uh, Steny talked about, we, uh, uh, we adopted the United States-Israel Rocket and Missile Defense uh, Cooperation Support Act, and uh, this authorizes uh, funding uh, for Israel's Iron Dome system to defend Israeli <coughs> civilians from short-range missiles and rockets from, uh, from Gaza. I was the leading Republican co-sponsor on that bill. But in addition to providing Israel with the needed tools, vital tools that she needs to protect herself from this convention, conventional and existential threat, which is daily for Israel, we've also got to provide her with the full political and diplomatic backing of the United States, something that perhaps you think we should take for granted, but we should not and we must not. As part of a broader, more comprehensive strategy of support for Israel, I've also introduced a, a bill, House Concurrent Resolution 260, which is a bipartisan uh, measure recognizing the uh, 62nd anniversary of Israel's independence. It notes congressional support for Jerusalem status as Israel's undivided capital and supports Israel's right to exist as a democratic Jewish state. And this resolution has over 190 co-sponsors, bipartisan, and I encourage you to go to your uh, uh, to member of Congress and ask him or her to support it and ask House leadership to bring it to the floor right away. And as Steny pointed out, uh, and uh, Jacob was nice enough to mention in, in his introduction, rather, of me, um, 
Yesterday we debated a bill uh, that should be passed, in, perhaps this afternoon, uh, a resolution uh, congratulating Israel for becoming a, a partner, a member of the OECD. As you know, Israel has been blocked from international organizations every step of the way. So this is a monumental first step for getting uh, a level playing field, which is all that Israel has ever asked for. So we should be voting uh, today, tonight, in the wee hours of the night. We don't know till when we'll be in session. Uh, let me turn to the Palestinian uh, leadership. We've seen Israel's constant uh, pursuit for peace. You, you contrast that to the Palestinian leadership and what it has done uh, time and time again, demonstrating in a very open way that it never misses an opportunity to... <laughs> it has rejected every offer of uh, peace from Israel. It's refused to recognize Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. It has failed to crack down on violent extremism, on anti-Israel incitement. Uh, indeed, it has even encouraged uh, this behavior. It has supported boycotts of Israeli goods. And the Palestinian Authority Prime Minister, whom some consider a moderate, he's the best we've got in that lot, he participated in a mass burning of the, these goods from, uh, from Israel. It has constantly tried to uh, use international organizations to demonize and take away any le uh, legitimate uh, right of, of Israel to even exist. It's tried, uh, tried hard to block the uh, membership of Israel in the OECD. Uh, this is not a partner for peace, and a, a former uh, PA foreign minister and a senior associate of Abu Mazen uh, announced just last week that the PA was intensifying its diplomatic and economic offensive uh, against Israel with the aim of isolating Israel, preventing it from uh, building its ties with the EU and ex trying to expel Israel from the UN. So Palestinian leaders keep threatening violence to extract concessions from Israel. And Congress should not reward such behavior. That's why I'm against a yet another $400 million bailout for the West Bank and, and Gaza, including another $150 million to the failed PA. Uh, we've got to hold these PA leaders accountable, and they're just not worthy of our tax dollars but turning, as we must, to the biggest threat uh, facing Israel and the United States and world peace, and that is Iran. The, uh, the sponsorship of uh, violent extremism, its pursuit of nuclear weapons uh, capabilities. What are we doing to, to, uh, to block this threat? Well, the House and the Senate chairman of the Iran Sanctions uh, Conference decided that Congress should again delay action. Um, I love all of my congressional brothers and sisters, but I must respectfully um, differ on this approach. First, the must-pass deadline was a month ago, then it became tomorrow, and now it's uh, toward the end of June. Uh, we've got to reach an agreement on the strongest possible sanctions bill now. We cannot keep deferring and, and waiting until we get all of our international partners in line. Now, some of my congressional colleagues need to stop buying into the same stale arguments about multilateral agreements and support that we've been hearing about from the first Iran Sanctions Act, which was adopted 14 years ago and has still not been implemented, Republican and Democratic. Uh, administration time and time again. In recent years, Iran is uh, uh, estimated to have imported gasoline directly or indirectly from at least 16 countries, including China, India, the Netherlands, France, the United Arab Emirates, the list goes on and on, as well as global oil companies like uh, France's Total and, and Shell. These companies and these uh, governments continue to talk about the need for action but they hide behind the claim that the UN Security Council must act first. There is no shortage of measures available. What we are short on is political will to move, to act, and to do what we must. The Security Council